what's up guys so I'm back out in the garage just got off work and I got a few packages in the mail and thought I would kind of show you what I've been up to because I've been working a little bit here and there um, on my days off and after work I'm trying to get the van ready because it's about uh, two weeks or so until my trip and I'd like to have a few things in place uh, to kind of help me with creature comforts for my uh, van but anyway let's go take a look at what I've got done so far and then I'll let you know what I got in the mail and the next things that are going to be coming to the van. So let's take a look. Alright, so let's head on into the van now. So, first thing, I've got a second battery, as you can see. And I've wired them in parallel. And when you wire two batteries of the same uh, voltage and amp hour in parallel, you get double the amp hour. So I've still got a 12 volt battery here except now it's double the amp hour so these are two 35 amp hours so I've got a total of 70 amp hours and uh, these are just small small batteries but they're deep deep cycles so they work really well for this and it doesn't take up a lot of room and I thought maybe one would be okay um, but I thought I might as well have two I've got the room it doesn't take up hardly any space so I might as well have two and then I've got the coolness of having two batteries wired in parallel so uh, beyond that you can see I built a new battery box but instead of a box I went with a tray. Um, my next thing for this tray is to get some kind of strap, um, possibly a, um, a wire strap to go just across the batteries. That way you know in case of an accident you know these batteries can't go anywhere. They're going to be in this tray. Um, so that's kind of a safety thing. Also you can see back there I went ahead and wired a fuse in and that fuse is connected to the inverter because I was thinking the inverter's got a, a fuses for each plug. It has two plugs so it's got two fuses for those plugs but the inverter isn't fused so I thought I would go ahead and put a fuse on there and I went ahead and went with a 35 amp fuse. Uh, I looked up a formula and since I have a 410 watt inverter you take 410 watts and divide by 12 and it comes out to like 33.33 uh, repeating so I needed a 35 amp fuse and that's how I come up with that so I've got a 35 amp fuse on my main wire um, these are my solar these here are my solar connections so I've got those to go to the clamps and also the Harbor Freight clamps uh, didn't come with nice clamps they're like really chintzy so these are some that I've got off a, uh, a uh, battery charger that I had extra so now I've got some uh, really you know a lot more heavy duty clamps than the ones that came on the the solar panels and then I've just got a SAE connection here so I can plug and unplug and everything's got caps so it's real nice and then also I wired on my battery tender which I will be mounting if I can find the right one because this one I've had I've got quite a few of these and they're little maintainers so this one's a 3 amp I've got another 3 amp there this one doesn't read right or something. When I first plug it in, it says low, and then it eventually goes to 60, but these are both fully charged batteries. Now, if I take that one and plug it up, it, it shows what my batteries are at, which are like 99%, and it'll, it'll charge them if they need charge, and it works fine. But this one, for some reason, does not work right. So, and this is the one I wanted to mount because it's made to mount. That one I can't mount, so I don't know what I'll do with that. Uh, I'll, I might just get some wires and run it over them, make it look real nice, and uh, mount it under there. That way I can just pull the plug out when I'm at somewhere with power, and I can uh, plug, the, plug it into power and charge my batteries off of power instead of relying on the solar, you know, if, if need be. Um, so anyways, um, got all that. Like I said, these are all wired in parallel now. Got a new tray, got the fuse, and then up here we've got a little bit of uh, different stuff going on. So let me see if I can just angle this up a little bit. And now I'll go ahead and plug in. Alright, so now I've got my solar panel clamps on, even though I don't have a solar panel hooked up. Um, I've just got the charge controller here. So basically you can see that the batteries are sitting at... 13.3 volts up here and down here this is a little bit more of an accurate meter I don't know if we'll be able to read this on camera at all 
There you go. So now when I'm normally using it, you'll be able to see the voltage. You'll be able to see my amp hours, my watt hours, and like the draw of it. So that's what this will do. And this doesn't use hardly anything to be able to do that. And that's li lined in between the controller and my battery. So that'll show what I'm actually putting to the batteries and then how much of that's actually being used. So that's a really uh, handy little thing to have. That way you kind of know what's going on rather than up here where you just see voltage that, you, that your batteries are at, you know. Um, so that's pretty nice there, definitely. And you can also see I've got some extra wires coming out here. And what I've went ahead and wired up is some 12 volt lights and these run off the batteries. I've got two of these. These are the normal lights and I'm thinking about just taking them out for now um, because they do, I don't really like the look of them plus I've got these so like you know those are nice because they're cargo lights which is the only reason I haven't taken them out yet so if I flip a switch up front these lights come on and there's two of them back here but then I've also got two of these now that are just 12 volt lights um, so those are pretty neat and those are just stuck to the roof right now with sticky like 3m tape because I don't have any I didn't want to mount them here because they would hang lower so up there they kind of hang you know even with this and then I kind of got the wiring just kind of here for now I may do something different because there's foam up here and I really have to puncture through that foam and that's kind of like vibration foam for this so it doesn't vibrate so I'd really have to puncture through that to be able to run a wire through there and I haven't got to that point yet plus these wires here all run above that too that are the normal van wires so anyway that's the basic update and then I kind of picked up a couple of these cheap on Amazon these are just little LED sticks and I can if I need a light like over at my desk over here where I might be cooking or something I can just have this light and hopefully I can get it to twist around the way I need it but it's all flexible and bendable and everything but they're kind of neat because they're just uh, USB LED lights and they're like seven bucks for three of them or something so all right I guess now we'll move back to the garage and uh, check out uh, check out the new packages. All right, so I thought I'd just show you before we head to the garage real quick what this uh, battery tender does. So you can see now it's analyzing the battery. Right when you plug it in, this is what it does. It analyzes it. Then it goes to charging if it needs charge. It's charging 12 volt, 95%. So this one actually works correctly and it knows the capacity of those two batteries so I'm not sure what uh, is wrong with this one or why it may not be working properly I mean maybe it's because it's an Everstart I don't know um, I know I've used this before because it, it's fairly new you can tell I mean I've had them a few years now but it's for uh, 12 volt and 6 volt and they both charge at 3 amp so you know and it was set to six or 12 volt because it was in the middle with a green light it didn't have a fault so i'm not sure why it doesn't work like it should maybe it's just because it's been sitting but anyway that one works fine i've got a couple more but none of them mount like that that's what i'm kind of annoyed with i really like this one because it was kind of compact and it you can mount it so oh well but anyway let's head to the garage so the first big thing i guess since it's right here at the door this isn't the one I wanted, but it's the one that is affordable without feeling like you're over the top. And it's also going to kind of help the van stay a little bit stealth. Um, by that I mean it isn't going to stick up above the top of the roof very much. And the van will still look like a work van, so which will be kind of nice if I ever need to, you know, pull over in a parking lot and sleep if I'm on a trip or something. Um, I guess I don't really need to open it since it's right here. This is the Fantastic Fan our fantastic vent um, basically it's just a fan 12 volt fan it's got very low amps amp draw so on high it pulls a total of three amps and it's got medium and then low it pulls 1.8 so that's you know not too bad even when you run it off batteries so that's that's pretty neat um, the downfall to it is that you can't forget about this when it's opened and drive down the road because the wind will break this cover or the the arm on it is I think what breaks from what I've read so if you have this model um, you can't 
forget it's open. And also, you can't have it open in the rain, of course, because this doesn't have like a rain thing. I mean, it, you can, you know, it'll close and keep the rain out, but you can't have it open and on while it's raining. So that's kind of a downfall of it. Um, the other one was double the price. This was like 110. The other one was like 200 something. And it actually lets you have it open in the rain and run it because it's more of like a, a vent coming out. And it all, it'll raise and lower as well. And it also lets you uh, drive if you forget to if you forget it's open, and drive down the road. It's not going to hurt it. So double the price, you get two more features, which are actually really awesome features. But I kind of wanted to keep with the stealthiness, and I don't plan on you know hopefully forgetting in it, and hopefully I'm not you know camping in the rain and need a fan. But anyways, that's what I got. So the downfall to this also is you got to cut a hole in the top of the van. So that's why I wanted to get it now before I mount these panels so I know where this is going to go and I can get it mounted up there because I, I haven't got anywhere with mounting the panels. I've still got the frame stand, sitting over there against the cabinets for uh, the solar panels and I haven't uh, even thought about it yet. I need to find the metal and I got to take those off. So I've kind of been just doing some other things. Uh, but I definitely got to get those mounted within the next two weeks. Um, let me crack open a soda here. So anyway, I wanted to upgrade my stove as well. So I did have this big double burner, and that's just because it's what I had. I've got smaller motorcycle stoves. I've got the real small, uh, you know, single man stoves that kind of pack down pocket size. And I, I like to use those when I'm just camping on the motorcycle. So I didn't really want something like that for the van. I wanted something a little bit more normal size. That way you can sit a pot on it and not worry about it really. Uh, the other ones are kind of tippy because they're just standing up on top of like basically what if you set a pan on a candlestick. That's kind of what it equates to. Uh, so I did have this double burner and that's because that's like my big camp stove for like when the family goes camping. So I didn't really need that. It's kind of big. So I went ahead and picked one of these up. And these are like $30 on Amazon. And of course I opened it upside down. So we'll go ahead and flip it over and let everything fall out. And now we can look at it. So when it's packed away, this is this sits like that. Then when you take it out, you just flip it over. And then you've got uh, you've got your stove, and it's got nice tall feet on it. And then this also flips open here. So you can put a little butane can in there and run it off butane, or it's got the hose. So you can hook it to your normal Coleman one pound propane bottles like that I use with that and I use with the, I got another stove that uses those. So I've got a lot of those one pound bottles around. And this is just a one man stove. It's real nice. Um, pretty, uh, pretty handy. The downfall to butane is they don't work well in the cold. I think, or maybe it's the propane. Maybe they both don't work well in the cold, but I think the propane will work well in the cold but it'll still have its down, you know, it, it still is affected by the cold, but I think the butane really doesn't work in the cold, and that's the cans that go in here. So when, when I'm storing it, which is nice in the van, I can just toss that hose in there, because I've already got a bottle stored in there, because I have to have it for that stove anyway, and then pretty much I just stick the stove in the case, flip it closed, stick it under the bench, and uh, that's, pr that's pretty cool. So you can see it's a, it's a Gas One brand, and it's a butane or propane dual fuel portable stove. So that's pretty cool. So that was 30 bucks. Kind of, to me, it's an upgrade, even though you're dropping a burner, but I never cooked on two burners alone anyway. I always just did one burner. So that's all I really needed. Um, another big upgrade here, in my opinion, which will, won't really affect the stealthiness of it, even though it's going on the outside. So, when you're at a campground or something that actually has power, this will allow me to plug in without running an extension cord outside the van. So this is just a Journeyman, uh, it's a Journeyman Pro 15 amp uh, plug, I guess they call it, uh, shore power. So when, like when you're, get, you're on your, your, your van or RV is parked somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is you see that little spot right there? that's where it's gonna go. So I'll have this come in right underneath here in my power center, either there or there, but I think there. I'll just have to figure out which one exactly. And then you'll come to this side and I'll have a little power outlet right here. So that'd be pretty cool. It'd be kind of handy if it was on the other side in a ways that 
you know, this side's going to have the door on it, a door there, so you're going to have a cord here running out where everybody walks or I walk. Um, and it'd be ideal to kind of have it on that side. But the reason I don't want it over there is because my power center is over here. So I'd rather have the plug coming in over here. And that's, I've watched a couple other Astro Van builds and that's where they put their plug. So that's where it's gonna go. It's uh, nice and waterproof. So you just kind of cut your hole in the van and the metal and you've got a little lead there. And pretty much like if I wanted to later take this and make an actual, actually an outlet in there, I could cut this end off and uh, run it to an outlet or actually I think this comes off and you can actually wire to the plug in here if you wanted to And then I can run a whole new plug So that's pretty cool I'm gonna have it uh, a little bit more RV style and I can just plug in and good to go now a little bit of another upgrade so on my bench in there I don't really have a way to plug in you know, I've got one on the van, you know, the 12 volt sockets, but I want something in the back just in case. Uh, I can't really get it open. But anyway, it's got two plugs in here. One's a 12 volt socket like your cigarette lighters. Of course, there's not a cigarette lighter in there. I don't smoke, so I don't need that. And then the other one's a dual USB charger. So and then they just plug up uh, to terminals on the back and then it comes with some wire and I can run those to the battery. And I've also got a voltmeter that I already had. And I think that last time I seen it was, here it is, in one of these drawers. And it happened to be that drawer. So there I've got a little voltmeter and it goes in kind of the same. And I've even got the single plate for it. I've got something else in here. Oh, this is a broken, that's a broken USB charger. These things tend to fail uh, the cheaper ones. So hopefully this USB one will last, but they tend to fail um, as in they just quit charging. They don't like catch fire or anything stupid. They just like the connections in them lose connection. You got to resolder them. I guess they get a little warm and uh, the solder kind of runs or something. But anyway, so that one's got a double panel of this plastic here and this one's got a single. So I'll put that in there with that and I'll be able to see just by looking at that the voltage of my batteries. And also on there, um, I, now these, I really don't know where these are. Um, I've got bags of, of switches, and they're not in there, but I've got some bags of some LED switches somewhere. I know I bought a bunch of them, and uh, so I'm going to be able to hook up switches to this stuff. That way that meter isn't on all the time. I don't know how much it would really use, but then I, just, I can just switch the meter on when I need the meter. But yeah, they're around here somewhere, so they're just little switches with LEDs on them. And then when you turn it on, it just shows the switches on. It's got a little LED. And yeah, I'll be able to turn that stuff on and off as I need it. That way it conserves the battery power, of course. Now, for all this stuff, um, I really want to have it fused. I just don't want it running straight to the battery. So I'm going to have the fan, the fan fused. I'm going to have th these fused. And for that, I've got... A little fuse fuse panel that I'm gonna actually get it out of the bag so I can let you take a look. It's just a little six accessory fuse panel. So I don't need very much. I, I I'm only gonna be hooking a maybe maybe three things at the most to it anyway. Uh, so you can see here that if it'll focus, there it goes. That it's got the ground terminal here from the battery. It's got the positive over here from the battery. Then you've got positives on the side, so you've got three there, three there, and then of course you've got six of the ground in the back next to the ground. So then this cover comes off, which is also hard to do with uh, one hand. And then inside here you can put your normal standard, not the small ones, but the, uh, the larger ones flat blade fuses then they've got LEDs to show what's in use and that kind of thing and then you'll just by looking at that uh, you'll know I think you'll know that the fuse is good so if you know something's not working you're going to know that that fuse uh, went bad or something or something caused it to go bad and then you'll uh, probably want to find out why that fuse blew before you stick another one in there and then it comes with like a bunch of labels. Um, I've got a label maker because I don't think there's like a bunch of them in here, but none of them really say what I want. Like cabin lights, 
I would be able to use because I want to put those lights on a fuse. Um, but there's really nothing else. Like like the fan maybe could go to blower. I don't know. But there's a bunch of stuff on there. So it'll all be fused and that'll be pretty nice. Um, I'll have a nice fuse panel down there. All right, so beyond all of that, I just kind of picked up some of these uh, little baskets so I can kind of get a little bit organized in here. They, I think they're supposed to Velcro to back the back of your seats, but they're, you know, they split apart here and you've got like a basket. So what I'd really like to do with these um, is to mount them. It's like they split apart here. To mount them somewhere where I can put my curtains because I got like the magnetic curtains that cover the the sliding door window and the two back windows that I'd like to be able to store somewhere accessible because right now they're underneath the bed in some totes so I wouldn't be able to get to them very quickly. Uh, so I want to have something for those so I'm going to use one of them for that then I've got an extra one that I'll mount somewhere and use it for something else. I don't know what yet but it'll kind of be nice to have a little bit more storage up high instead of everything tucked up under the bench. Uh, so there's, I got to figure out some more stuff for that. I may just get some more of those depending on how I like these and uh, go from there and see, and see what happens with that. Um, so anyway, that's about all I've really been up to. Um, so got a little bit of work to do. Definitely got to get that fan installed first and foremost. That way I can get to work on the roof rack. And I, I really want to build a nice one, so I want to find some nice metal that I can uh, connect up there to the to the existing mounts. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I may end up taking off, completely taking off this stand here because there's actually that flat plate and a little piece that sticks up. So then I could connect my own piece because this is actually angled a little bit. You can see it's like, this is straight and then it's at an angle there. So I don't really wanna build a rack that's like angled like that. So I may just take that off and put on my own uh, my own piece there um, so yeah that's kind of what I've been up to um, I did go ahead and I've been meaning because I put a hitch on here to haul my bike which is you know I've had it on a while and I do pull my trailer with this but I hadn't had my trailer lights hooked up I just got a small uh, utility trailer um, and when I need to haul something I usually hook that trailer up but I hadn't had my lights hooked up so I went ahead and hooked those up so I had to take each of the lights out and then, you know, these vans do come with these hitches. If you, that was an option when you bought it, you could get it. So it's already got the holes drilled that, that come, like you run it, you would run the wire back out of lights down inside this panel, which I did. And then there's a hole down there, but underneath it's covered with like a rubber flap. So I just, you know, you move the flap out of the way, you run your wire and I put grommets in there. That way the wire don't rub. And then I ran it down here, and for now I just kind of stuck in a brake light. You know, that's a you know a little hitch mount brake light, so that's what's in there now instead of my hitch. Um, now I've got an extra brake light down there, so that's kind of nifty. Um, but all that's wired up, so next time I use my trailer, I'll have uh, trailer lights again. So, other than that, I don't know if I'm gonna do that root that vent today because it's it's been kind of rainy. It hadn't rained in, since I've gotten off work, but. It, um, I really don't want to do this tonight. I want to start. I want to start cutting this hole, like on my day off, which may not be till next week, because uh, I've got to work the next two days. I'm off Friday, and on Friday I plan on putting a new radiator in here because the radiator has been cracked since I got it, and it just barely seeps. It doesn't even drip, um, so it just seeps. So I need to replace that before my trip, just to replace it. It's like a hundred bucks. So I'll do that, and then I'm gonna flush the coolant before winter here. But yesterday, uh, I had to go and get new tires on here. So I've got these, I, see I went, this is the thing. I looked up Big O's and they seemed like they had uh, pretty good reviews. So I went ahead and went online and scheduled an appointment. And then when I called the next day, because it was a Sunday and I have an appointment for Monday that I scheduled online, called them and they go, and they go, I go, well, I just got into an appointment. I just wanted to make sure it was, it was confirmed. They go, how'd you do it? I go online. They go, oh, our online system doesn't work. I go, oh, great. Well, I scheduled it for nine. How quick can you get me in? So anyway, I ended up dropping the vehicle off and they got me in around nine. Um, but I wanted the uh, General Tire uh, Grappler A2s because I lived in a town with uh, a General Tire over in Illinois and that was a really good factory. You know, I knew a lot of people that worked there and had worked there a long time. 
Um, plus it had $125 in re rebates plus a 60,000 mile road warranty, which was pretty darn good for a tire, you know, set of tires. Um, but of course I get there, they don't have the tires in stock, they want to order them. So I go, well, I can't really do that. I need to, you know, get some tires here. So I didn't really want to wait. So I went ahead and let them put these on. And these are 20 bucks more expensive, so hopefully they're 20 bucks better. But this is their own brand tires. It's a, it's a Bigfoot big o all terrain so that's pretty cool it's an all terrain it's a premium tire they say um you can see it's got uh pretty good uh tread tread depth on it i wanted something even though it's two-wheel drive i wanted something that's fine in the snow and if i get off in a little mud i'm not going to be like sliding you know too bad um which is what a lot of people put on their two-wheel drive vehicles you know they most people think you should put a uh normal street tire on there which is fine but you know, you're going to have a little bit more grip in the winter and everything because little little do people know that the best traction on snow is snow. So if you get tires and you, you know, the snow gets in between the treads, that's the best traction for the snow. Not It's like not rubber on snow, but snow on snow is the best traction in snow. So even though these don't have huge, uh, huge gaps in them or anything, uh, they'll, you know, be fine for the snow. And also they had to do the idler arms. They, you know, I wanted to get, they said they couldn't cover my warranty on the tires unless I replaced that, which I wanted to replace the parts anyway. So that's fine. So there's two new idler arms left and right because my other tire on the passenger side was wear worn really bad. And if I take you in here, this is the only tire I kept. I'm going to have to get a rim to mount it on for a spare because that van only comes with a donut spare. You can see here, these tires aren't that old and I put two on the front. And this was the better of the two on the front, but you can still see on this side, if you look, this side has worn considerably more than this side, and this was the inside. Now the other side, the one I didn't keep, was like literally worn flat. I mean, it. I would say, you know, a few hundred more miles I was going to see belts. So I really didn't want to drive with that because I have to drive interstate, you know, 75 miles an hour every day to work, you know, just 10 minutes. But yeah, I didn't want that on there at all very long. So anyway, the steering's fixed. Um, I have to take it back to get an alignment in a day or so. Um, literally, like, after I dropped it off, they called me and said, when I was ready to pick up, they said their alignment machine went out. So yeah, they, had, they said they aligned it the best they could with tape measures and eyeballs, is what the guys told me, so whatever. So I know a couple days ain't going to hurt the tires at all. But it, I mean, driving down the interstate, it drives straight, it drives fine, it doesn't pull either way. Um, so yeah, that's where that's at. Um, so anyway, I guess, I don't know what I'm gonna do today. Probably do some of this minor 12 volt stuff. And maybe figure out some of that, where that's gonna go and how that's gonna hook up. And then save the fan for another day and then I still gotta do the uh, roof rack. Uh, so that's definitely gotta get done soon. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the little bit of updates I got. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with what's gonna uh, come with the Moto van, so you can't beat that. You know, a few upgrades here and there. It's going to be a pretty cool camper van, moto van, whatever you want to call it. I call it a moto van basically because anytime I take that out, I'm probably going to have my bike on the back. I'm probably never going to take it on its own just to camp. I'll be taking it with my bike. So to me, it's a moto van for sure. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.